and welcome back to a round two action of the Lakshak Modern 2K series. In the feature match at the moment, we've got Shad, May, and Jay Samurai. Shad on a Naya Zoo variant as well. Looks like he's playing a big zoo. He's got some knights, he's got Loxodon Smiters, Domri Raids in the main deck. And he's playing against Jay, who is on what well, looks like Affinity. And uh, both players deciding whether they're going to keep the opening seven. Shad looks like he's got a Wilder Cattle, a Lightning Bolt, a Raging Ravine as well in his hands. Shad just has the Mulligan. He's gonna get his six cards. Jay, the blink mode. Jay, Jay looks like he has a handful of good cards, but it's not necessarily a functional affinity hand because he can't get anything off. To, he, he can't get off to a really explosive start, which is what affinity thrives on. Yeah, and <laughs> at least he has multiple win coins, so if Shad does end up drawing into a removal every hand, which he can possibly do playing four lightning balls and four bots, he can sort of still be in the game. However, because he's not doing multiple plays in turn one, he's not going to be killing Shad very quickly, and Shad's deck is very good at racing as well. Yeah, so it looks like Jay has decided to, to keep this hand. Uh, Shad resolving his mulligan, going down to six cards. So, who do you think so? Is 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 Jay favorite here being on Affinity in game one? Well, in game one, Affinity is generally going to be favored in the majority of matches. And post game, everyone sides in a bunch of hate for Affinity, so Affinity could sort of slack off there. But Game one, I'd say Jay's favorite, however his hand isn't super explosive as we discussed earlier, so we may end up losing. So, Shay decides to keep his six card hands, goes to the bottom, Jay leads on Blink Moth Nexus, followed by Signal Piss and passes back. Shad untaps, looks like he threw a Dramokus command for the turn. He's shortcutting the he'll fetch off his wooded foothills and cast Wild the Cattle, probably fetching his stomping ground. Yeah, shared on 17. So what might put Jay at a disadvantage is if he doesn't throw a Mox Opal or a Spring Leaf Dream or some other way to generate more mana. Yeah, and Affinity gets most of explosiveness because it plays quick mana effectively. Spring Leaf Drum, one mana tapping it, zero mana creature for an additional Oh, and Jay rips the Mox Opal off the top. The question now is whether he'll have enough mana, have enough artifacts to turn on Metal Graph. At the moment he does not. He played Inkmoth Nexus for the turn. Uh, he could turn, he could activate the Nexuses and turn them into artifacts by themselves. Or he could just cast what well, looks like a Steel Overseer in his hand. Which he does do. The Mox Opal's now in line, taps for any color of mana. Jay just decides to pass back. And we actually see in Shad's hand the Mocus command, which is probably going to be used to take out the Steel Overseer as soon as possible. Yeah, so yeah, Shad shocks with the Sacred Foundry. Attacks with his Wild Nagatl. Shadowfield just going through the motions you're seeing if Jay will block, which I don't think he will. Yeah, unlikely to block, and after before damage looks like Shad will cost Tremokus command choosing the modes or place a 1 1 counter on the cattle and fight. So it looks like Jay took 4 damage there. Unable to block. The box opal is now turned off again. Jay top decking a mountain for the turn. Plays Glimmer Void. And now he's stuck with a Mass of Ethereum and Aquan Ravenger in hand along with that mountain. Um, Steel Overseer, probably the most important payoff card in Affinity in this sort of matchup. 
way he's playing against other creatures? Yeah, I feel just being able to pump your entire team and having an XX is very powerful against any deck that plays Lightning Bolt. However, Shad does play Path to Exile in his 60s, so... Yeah, so here J costs the mass of Ethereum. It is currently a 3-3. Only three artifacts active in play at the moment for J. At any time, he can tap that Mox Opal to wake up one of the Nexuses and make it a full power and toughness creature. Shad loses a life thanks to fetching of his Windsweep Teeth, finds Forest, and uh, we'll have a look to see how he decides to proceed this time. So, Jay not off to the most explosive affinity star. Um, still very possible for him to come back, to, to, to get back into this game and get ahead. Uh, Shad casting a Domri raid. And we're actually going to see straight up, Shad's going to be minus in the Domri raid, which is going to make the Wild Card will fight against the Monster of Ethereum. And Jay actually missed his interaction there with his next side because he could have easily... He's, Actually, trading of both creatures where he could have saved the Master of Ethereum by waking up a Nexus and then trading off with the Wild Cartel. So, Jay may have just missed that. So, at the moment, Jay untaps through its champion for the turn. Cast the its champion, which does not have Metal Craft at the moment. It does now, however. Also, casting that Archon Ravager. However, both players missed that. Uh, that Mox that, didn't have Metal Craft. Yeah, though. that Mox did not have Metal Craft. So at the moment, the Mox does have Metal Craft and the Edge Champion has protection from all colors. That Aqua and Ravager also has one counter on it. Shad now deciding on his best course of action. Obviously, Edge Champion quite powerful against other creatures and the removal every day. However, Shad is just going for the attack here. Shay has to be thinking Shad has some sort of removal spell, so. Yeah, I'm probably baiting out this block, getting rid of the... Okay, yeah. sure, it's just going to be a knight. So, J blocks. Shad just plays a knight of the Reliquary. J, and with no cards in hand, untaps, throws a glimmer void for the turn. And what do you think the best avenue to victory is for him at the moment? At this point, I'm actually inclined to just stay back. Because the knight is going to end up getting a lot bigger. Jay doesn't really have much window attack. He could attack with the Ink Moth Nexus just to deal infect damage. However, Jay may not be aware of it, but Shad's Knight of the Reliquary could at any point after his next upkeep just tap itself, sacrifice a land, and then fetch a Ghost Court to deal with that Nexus. That, that knight at the moment, a 4 4. So Jay attacks for 1 point of infect damage. Also, Samurai doesn't necessarily have a critical mass of artifacts at the moment, so going the, the poison route is unlikely to get things done over two turns. Yeah, it's looking more like a 10 turn clock at this point. However, Affinity is never out of it. He could easily just top deck a cranial plating or a master of Ethereum. May plays a tapped stomping ground. He's got the Domri raid still in the, the corner of his screen there, which is on two loyalty. So Shai proceeding to combat. Attacks with, an, with the Walnut cattle. And Jay is just gonna block again here. As you'd expect. So Shad deciding how, what his best course of action here is. The H champion does pose a huge problem for him since he won't be able to attack through it. Uh, is the best the best thing for him to do is, is to try and get Jay off of Metal Craft. 
and here we are going to see a lot to this fighter. Chad does have an out to sort of deal with this edge champion. He can easily just sack his forest and search up a Kessig Wolfland, which will give whatever attacker he wants trample. And the edge champion can only block two of that trample damage because it only has two toughness. So Dre top taking another edge champion here. Plays it. And now it looks like this might be a problem for Dre. For, for Shad. But as I said earlier, if Shad does decide he's going to fetch up the Kesu Wolfram, the two edge champions aren't going to be that much of a threat unless they start double blocking. So yeah, Jay fires up the Ink Boss Nexus, attacks for one poison. Shad just takes it, goes to two infinity. Mm. End of the turn, Shad taps his knight, sacks a forest, and he's going to be searching up a land. The land he searches up is going to be. That looks like the Kesik Wolf ran. So, Shad deciding the best the best course of action here is just instead of going over under the edge champion, it's just to go through it. Unfortunately, now Jay having two edge champions, Shad is probably going to have to trade something off with it, with one of them at least. Well, you wouldn't trade with any of the edge champions actually, you just lose a creature to deal damage. So Shad is probably hoping to try and kind of stummy Jay's ability to get through here. So he may want to pick up a Gavini Township. Shad flashes his Dominator, he reveals voice city search and puts that into his hand. Mm, his true step for the turn was a Birds of Paradise. In this situation, it's kind of hard for Shad because he wants to put as many things as he can on the board and he also sort of needs to get his creatures above for toughness. So I think playing the Loxid and Smiter and the Bird is probably going to be his, well, my preferred line of play at this point. And we'll see if he does that. So Shad leads on the bird. Plays that smiter. And passes back. So Jay with no cards in hand. Throws a signal best. Deciding whether he should cast this. Plays the signal best. And Jay doesn't necessarily have any uh, straightforward attacks on board. He, he might be incentivized to attack with his lands. As he's doing that, he attacks with the Ink Moth and Blink Moth Nexus. Shadia taps the knight of the reliquary to go find, presumably Ghost Court to take out one of those, those next side. And we do in fact see the Ghost Court though. Probably going to take out the Yep. Yeah. Shad, Shad sacrificed the Ghost Court, he's the Inkmoth Nexus. And Jay probably only with the one basic in his deck list, which is already in play, the Mountain. So Shad takes one. Of Blinkpot Nexus. And as we see with cards that don't often get played in modern, it's really hard for people to evaluate whether or not they should be dealing with them. So Jay deciding not to attack Domni Dead in the last turn and in this turn has basically kept the Planeswalker alive. And that could end up being a substantial amount of card advantage for Shad the longer the game goes. Yeah, so Shad's the now. Oh, Shad pluses on, oops, beg your pardon, he minus 
on the Domedy Raid and fought the Signal Beast. Attacks now with all his creatures. He's got access to 4 mana total. It's just going to give plus 1 for someone trap with this word. So at the moment the Kissick Wolf ran not dealing a ton of damage. Shad's just trying to get in as many points of damage here when he can. So Jay's lined up his blocks on the knight and the 4-4 four -four wild cattle. Which means the smiters are gonna come through at the moment. And Chad just deciding to give the knight just trample, plus zero plus zero trample. And I believe it's a five six power creature. So Jay's actually taking twelve of this, putting him down to four. So Shad plays all wild and gets all the birds. And bosses back. Jay stop deck for the turn, a dog still citadel, which is not what he wants to see. Jay likely dead on the swing back and it doesn't look like there's a way for him to win to deal a lethal damage this turn. I just feel the turn where Jake could have traded off with the Wild Decartle sort of put him in a position where he had to top deck live each game to stay in this game and as you can see Jake standing there and there nothing much you could do at that point yeah. scooping them up we've still got a game 2 to bring you and we can visit the sideboards we'll start with Jay in his sideboard he's got one Chalice of the Void, one Grafticus Cage, one Thoughtseize, two Ancient Grudge, one Ethos Wound, Canonist, one Spell Sky, two Wolf Flare, one Blood Moon, one Dismember, one Jiru Food, Ether Grid, one Worship and two Thought Ghost. What do you like in this matchup, Akil? Well, I've always been a fan of Blood Moon, if you know me, and many people don't like it. However, against Shad's deck, everything is basically multicolor that you care about. And Blood Moon is going to turn off the majority of the deck. Another card to consider is also the Chalice of the Void. And a lot of people underestimate how powerful bringing that card in on two is against Shad's deck. Because Shad does play cards like the Vocus Command, and then you have to assume he has cards like at least Stony Silence in his sideboard. Whether he has it or not doesn't matter at this point. Worship is also a good thing to bring in because Shad is predominantly a creature deck. However, you play Affinity Amza, so what would you bring in in this match? I, th I think the key with Affinity is that Jay doesn't want to dilute his deck too much with reactive cards and uh, non non creature spells. I think you want to stay as 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 explosive and as fast as you can be. And so I, I can see on the play in particular, I can see a uh, I can see Jay bring in the Blood Moon, uh, th the worship and things of this nature is maybe a bit slow for my taste. I think he'll bring in the Dismember as well. But other than that, I don't think he wants to side with too heavily. On Shad's side, we've got one Ancient Grudge, two Blood Moon, one Garrick Teak, two Kitchen Finks, three Core Firewalker, one Thundermore Hellkite. One Wete, one Gideon ally of Zendika, one Grafticus Cage, one Rest in Peace, and Sagada, host of Herons. And the first thing I can see here, uh, the obvious choice to bring is going to be the Ancient Grudge. Because Ancient Grudge kills two artifacts. One more can you ask for one mana, and then one for flashback. The next card I'd like to see Shad bring in is probably going to be Kitchen Finks, surprisingly. Because Kitchen Finks is going to be great at blocking the majority of Jay's non-flying creatures, although his flying creatures are the major threat, Shad's life total could drop precariously low. He doesn't need to worry too much about Inkpath Nexus if he manages to get Knight in time and he doesn't die immediately in the first three turns. So dealing with normal damage, gaining life is always going to be essential for Shad. So, interestingly, Shad has Blood Moon in his sideboard. Obviously, he doesn't think 
Bladman's much of an issue for his deck and his deck can play through it then. So with this information, do you think Jay still brings Bladman in on the play or...? I still think if Shad doesn't fetch basics early and Jay goes Blood Moon very early, Shad is not going to be able to beat that. He's not going to be able to use any sack hands. And Shad has a number of non-basics in his deck. He also plays Knight of the Deliquity, which means you're going to have to assume his opponent's deck, well, his deck has lots of non-basic lands. Another thing is, Blood Moon will turn off Knight of the Deliquity's ability for non-basics. And Chad doesn't want to sack non ball his basic lands if Blood Moon's in play. That is true. The players here throwing their seven cards in the, the first sideboarded game. Jay here looks like has brought in the Blood Moon. Looks like he has a zero land hand that has a mox opal. Well, interesting thing, with Affinity it is actually possible to win with Zero hand Lands. However, when you have cards like Blood Moon in your opening hand that you want to cast, it's kind of hard to keep that type of hand. So he's got Mox Opal, Unithopter, Cranial Plating, Blood Moon, Steel Overseer, Galvanic Glass, and Signal Pest. So just one extra Zero Mana artifact short, and you can make a case for for keeping that hand. Both players are deciding to go down to six cards. Affinity historically becomes a lot worse post, post board because there's so much artifact hit across all the colors. And it's good reason that they get weaker, but the thing is, if your opponent doesn't have hate for your artifacts in their opening hand, or even if they mull to hate and dilute their own strategy, you kind of stall in the game most of the time. The only thing is when they have the perfect hand to answer yours, then you feel like you can't win. But with Affinity, even average hands with hit for artifacts is still beatable. Yes. Uh, the the Af Affinity deck, I think surprisingly, is quite resilient to hit and beating the hit. Stony Silence, while a very impactful card against the deck is not necessarily the end of the game on the spot. Uh, both both players here just deciding whether they're going to keep their six card ends. And just going back to the Stony Silence line of thought, basically, if your opponent is on the draw and they have Stony Silence in hand, you could easily just empty your hand before they get a chance to play the Stony Silence, in which case it doesn't help them as much. Yep. Jay uh, deciding to go down to 5 cards. Uh, the Affinity deck also one that doesn't necessarily mulligan that well. Yeah, because the deck is so synergy based, if you end up diluting your hand even more by losing cards, you're not going to like any subsequent hands you're going to get from Mulligan. Yeah, those, those Ornithopters and Memnites not quite amazing on their own. So in in this matchup, in terms of the play of cards, Jay probably would ideally like the Steel Overseer. Its champion also an important card in the matchup, ensuring that he can block and attack through through Shad with no problem. Jay's five card end looks reasonable for him to keep. There's a Dark Steel Citadel, Steel Overseer, Dismember. So Jay... Jay deciding to keep... He plays the Dark Steel Citadel, Castle Memnite, and Castle Wall Scourge going down to 18. And the thing is, yeah, Jay didn't actually see Kasali Pride Mage game 1. So he may not be aware that Chen has it in his hand, or in his deck at least, and we are actually aware that Chad has Kasali Plan Mage in hand, and Kasali Plan Mage can actually be very good in this match because you get to deal with Jay's Wincon, which is probably going to be the Steel Overseer. However, Jay does need to find the land before that becomes an actual play for him. So Jay with this member still Overseer in hand. And Chad fetching this forest actually inclines me to believe he may be on this Blood Moon plan. 
could be on the Bloodborn plan, could also just be conserving his life total against the more aggressive deck. The Shadow lead on, on Noble High Rock. Passes back. Jay hoping for land. He draws a Cranial Blade. So Jay's got all the tools he needs to win this game. He just doesn't have the resources to cast them at the moment. Well, I have a question for you, Yamza. Would you dismember the Snowball Hydra? I think, considering that Jay's most his land drop, I think I would. I think it's worth just setting your, your opponent back an extra turn. And hoping he can't turn to Blood Moon. Or be will be able to double spell very early. This is shared fetches again, fetches basic planes. Uh, shuffles up. And now if you haven't considered him bringing in Blood Moon now, I think you should believe he's playing the Blood Moon plan at this point. And that's the Luxidon Smiter from Shad. Passes back. Jay, Jay holding this dismember, it's just going to waste in his hand at this point. So Jay finally rips his land to Darksteel Citadel. He plays it, deciding which which play he preferred to make the cranial plating or the steel overseer. I think you'd want to just play the, the steel overseer to try and get as many activations out of it as possible. And the Cranial plating is usually a turn 3 play where you cast it and you put it in the same turn. However, the disc with that play is because Jay does know that Chen and plays Dramokus one at least, and he didn't get rid of the Stocks and Smiter. And okay, now we're actually seeing him dismember the Smiter, so both our players aren't going to matter, but I'd actually have maybe played the Cranial plating just to bait some sort of artifact move because in the long run, the Steel Overseer is going to be more powerful with this board. So Jay attacks for two, took four off the dismember, but he'll gain one of those those life points back from the wall scourge. Shots did off the turn was a wild in the cattle. Play the wooded foothills. Taps two mana. And now we're gonna see this Kasali Pride Mage. Cast the Kasali Pride Mage. Taps the Nova High Rock for a green cast in the cattle as well. So I was actually hoping to entertain that Shad was attacking with this 2-3 Noble High Rock at that point. Shad, Shad known for his affinity for islands and snap the majors. So, possible that he, he doesn't want to get too aggressive. So yeah, Jake costs the cranial plating. He does have the ability to blow up an artifact on Jay's side of the, the table with that Kasari Pride Mage. So, Tax for one with the, the Wall Scourge. Jay gains one, Shad loses one. Passes back. You can see Jay has an Aquan Ravager in hand along with the Steel Overseer. So, the only thing holding Jay back at the moment are, is his mana constraints. Well, even if he had one more land, it wouldn't really change much. He could have maybe got in with the Bolt Scourge, but Chad had the ability to sack the Pride Mage and deal with it. Chad features Sacred Foundry at the end of, at the end of Jay's turn. The draw for the turn is Domri Raid. <laughs> Looks like Shadow Cast that. Likely to just minus and. Yeah. Chooses to minus. Chooses to fight the Wall Scourge. That Wall Scourge is going to bite the dust. Jay will gain one life, however. Not the life link. Shad attacking with a 5-5 five, five while in the cattle, thanks to the two exalted triggers from one from the Noble Hydro, one from the, the Pride Mate. Yeah, just passes back. Jay's draw is a glimmer void. 
Okay, okay. He's got things that he can do now. Unfortunately, Chad still has this Kusadi bad mage, so I'm not looking too good on J side. Yep, yep. So Jay deciding to equip the Krenger plate into the steel overseer. That steel overseer is a is a six one. Unfortunately, the one toughness means he's not really going to be doing much. I would have actually preferred him to equip it to the Memnite at this point, just so he can trade off of Chad's Wild Mikato. However, at this point, I feel there's no real out for Jay. Chad is quite considerably ahead at this point, and the Kusali Plat is just going to take out whatever Chad feels is going to be the biggest threat. So Shad pluses on the Dumri raid, reveals a non-creature, taps his photos, plays another noble Hyra. The last card in, in his hand is a land, and Shad deciding on his best attacks here. The Dwalna Cattle will be a 6-6 when it attacks. Stomping ground, the only card left over in Shadow. Jay decides to chump lock of the meme night. Yeah, block. Plays resolve damage. Shed passes back. The Rosen Inkwa makes this. And this is actually what Jay would have loved to have seen earlier in the game. So he casts that arc by the Ravager. Shad's gonna have some responses. It looks like he's gonna sacrifice the Pride Mage and to destroy the Krangle Blading. So that means Jay has a 1-1 one -one arc by the Ravager and a 1-1 one -one, uh, still overseer. Also has the Ink Path Nexus in play, which might be his best avenue to victory. Deciding not to activate the Ink Path Nexus to get an extra counter on it. Yeah, I feel he could have just tapped the self to put the counter on it. That may be a misplay. And Chad's probably just going to minus Dombey at this point. May he decide to attack with the Wild Card first? <laughs> and we see a, an Horizon Canopy being sat there to draw an extra card for Chad. Chad manages to flood out, looking like these zoo decks don't like giving the owner's creatures here. So Chad's draw of the Horizon Canopy was a basic plane. <laughs> Chad's just busy going through the math in his head. So what I would have liked Jay to have done at the end of the previous turn before he activated the Steel Overseer was activate the Inkpot Nexus, tap the Overseer, put a 1-1 counter on it, and if Chad makes this play which he's going to make at the moment, which is fighting the Steel Overseer with the, uh, with the Wildman Castle, he could just sack it to the the Aquan Ravager in the Bina problem. Deciding not to sacrifice it to the Ravager at the moment. So he, he could have done all that and put Shad on a Teuton clock with the Inkpot Nexus. Say so Jay attacks for two with the Navai Rock. I beg your pardon, Shad attacking with two with Navai Rock. I feel. Jay may have a sense of nerves affecting him here because in, in this situation he had all the tools he needed 
in order to win the game that turn, I believe. But he's still in it. He can still turn it around if he top takes something. Fair to take him with a 5 fire and wild the cattle. Jay deciding to wake up the impulse nexus and Shambula. And it seems like Jay is just managing to short circuit here as robots do sometimes. She has fun up as a lot of smite. So he's draw for Jay is another odd one here with Jay. So Hamza, what is your comment on Jay's mismatched averages as well as its champions? I mean, some people just like to see the world burn. So is that implying that if you mismatch your cards, the world is burning inside? So Shadia attacks the Luxodon Smiter. Jay blocking and deciding to sack the new ravage to the old one. The old ones moved to a 3-3 and Shad follows up with a knight. I'm just confirming how many lands are in his graveyard. It's like 5, so it's a 7-7 seven, seven knight. And this, Nox and his knights is attacking for 6 every day. The knight will attack for even more. I wish Shad may just want to fetch a... Oh, well... That's gonna be a little bad That's the end of that. So here we go. That one the cattle with a minus one minus one counter on it from being blocked by Inkmoth Nexus. So it draws and in place. Is the Kusali Pride Mage. Kusali Pride Mage taps the mana, deciding whether he wants to sacrifice it. He's first gonna get this activation from the Exalted, I believe. Oh, sure, he's just gonna stay up, go in there for five. And that's dead. Jay's gonna get out to 11. Chad probably gonna pick up Gavini Township or a Kessie Wolfram. I feel the Gavini Township's a fair pick here. Decides on the Kessie Wolfram. Activates it. Sure, he's gonna get get an additional 2 damage here. So Jay uh, is a, ma a master with the I feel this master is just too late at this point. Yeah, it'll only be a 3-3 fast. And Shad's knight actually has 5 lands in the area, or 6 actually, because he's second land now. So that knight's an 8-8. Plus two exalted diggers, that's ten, and then the Kessie Wolfman is just going to be lethal. So, Chad is going to go out. So, Chad may defeat Samra. So, you, you Big may Zoo. have won this match, you say? Big Zoo beats Affinity in the round two of the Modern 2K series.